Hey guys, RC here, back with episode four, starting order seven. So we are at the end of the year, so I wanted to come back here. Uh, it's very strange, secretary is not the top flat three-year-old. That's odd. Could be they didn't, she didn't, he didn't race. That could be what happened there. Uh, he could have went straight out to stud. Here are our new horses. Uh, let's see, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 Colts out of 32 uh, foals. So that is good. And we spent some money. Let me tell you, we spent some money. If we go to finances, uh, let's see, transfers, no, diary. I haven't even looked on this screen yet. Oh, my God. All right, so let's see. We have now 32 yearlings. Let's take a look at our breeding mares. If we sort them by rating, uh, we bought Lady by Red. She cost us $320,900. Uh, so that was one we splashed the cash. Uh, we also brought in Classic Vision, 400 and. I'm sitting here trying to see the small gray type up here, $454,750. So we've got a pair of really good six, uh, really good, good uh, breeding mares there, a six-year-old and an eight-year-old. And we've actually got a couple of 70s and 60s as well. So we've got, you know, we've got a handful of, of mares that could, turn us some pretty decent uh, yearlings or, you know, foals. So we're going to leave these guys alone. We're going to go to the racing stable. So remember, these are the foals from last year. They're always born January 1st. Uh, so, and, you know, they become one year old. And I guess they start aging while they're in utero. Don't know. Have no idea. Never thought I would say in utero in a YouTube video. But, uh, hey, that is what it is. So you can see that even with training, we have some reds here. It's their first day practicing. It's going to take them a little while. Uh, but you see we have a pretty good mixture, a slow track, a good track, a muddy track. Um, let's go through here and see what we are dealing with. So uh, Colt, no good. We're going to auction them off. Uh, we have a female not so good i'm gonna try to, we've got 32 coming in each year now so if they aren't race worthy i think i've got all the breeders that i want unless i find a, a, a mare a filly at this age i suppose that just has really high potential we're gonna sell the rest of them off uh, like this one has really good potential i'm gonna keep that one uh, let's go ahead and add her. Do we want to try to, no, nah, I don't want to race her. Let's retire her to stud. So if they look decent, I'm going to, I'm going to keep them. All right. This is uh, another one. We're going to auction off golden delicious cattle, cattle coat. Is that a Philly or I didn't look that's a Philly. Um, we're gonna we're gonna keep her. She's close to fifty percent. Uh, Ily Nastasi, tennis player. We're gonna auction off. Princess Fleur, auction off. Of course, that's from uh, Harry Potter, I would guess. Jesmond, auction. True vision. And I really don't know what we're dealing with. So, you know, we're going to auction that one off. I really only want to keep them if they look over 50%. All right, there's a Colt. Not quite. Tuning. We're going to retire her to stud. All right, some more Colts. We're going to auction that one. I don't know. 
gonna it's not quite where I want it so let's go ahead and auction that off uh, salt honors or solid honors any given moment yep definitely get rid of last second we're gonna auction all right now we've got a run of Colts here uh, I'm hoping one of them looks decent enough to race Flugel horn, nope. All right, so not very happy with any of these. Swing the, oh, swing the, tell you what, we may race this filly. I think we're going to race her. So we're going to keep her training. Let's swing the lead. Downhill skier. That's a colt. I'm going to say that's close enough to 50%. Let's run him. Miss Breezy, we will auction. Yep, we'll auction him. And my way, auction that. All right, so these, I believe, because they're two years old, they will go into the two-year-old auctions in January. Now, this is where we ought to make a lot of money. All right, so while we've got Let's make that money first. So let's do that. And boom, $13 million. So you can see going two years old, even though we thought they weren't very good, 600,000 plus for quite a few of them and over 100,000. So we just made really nice money. Uh, Ol Olgalas went for 2.3 million. Illy Nastasi went for 2.3 million. Very nice. Maybe I should have kept them. All right. Now we've got some money. Before we do anything else, let's go to our stables. And we have a breeding barn. So we and we can only hold 23 horses at our stable. Which is okay. I don't need stud facilities because none of these are good enough to put out to stud. Uh, we're going to buy the all-weather Gallic track. So now we have grass, turf, and dirt. Uh, we're going to buy a swimming pool to work on stamina. Uh, training stalls, which is a starter's gate to help their starts. Uh, a car park for us to park at. On-site accommodations. That's my house. An office building for office staff. Let's go ahead and hire a gardener to make it nice, nice and purdy. Uh, staff accommodation building for them to work at. A quarantine building. If one of our horses gets sick in the training in the training barn, we can put them there to take care of them. Uh, the gallop rails just to make the track look a little nicer. Um, and we have two horses, so I'm going to buy one one horse trailer and one two horse trailer. If they go off to the same racetrack for a race, they can go together and we only pay transportation one time. If they go to two separate courses, we have the one trailer for one horse and the other horse can use the two trailer and we'll have to add trailers as we move along. So that's what we're gonna do. We just splashed a lot of cash there uh, so let's take a little bit more in-depth look here. So they're not quite ready. And there's our training data. So they're training at five furlongs. Now he prefers a good track. So we could put him on dirt gallops, but we're going to leave him on the turf. He has average agility, average starting, likely suited for a dirt track. So you know what? Let's move him to a dirt track. And he's a little short of work, meaning he needs more time. Fair enough. We've done that. Uh, he does seem to prefer seven furlongs, but we're going to work him at five just to build, build him up. And actually, that's a her. On the Colt downhill skier, he gallops on turf, pairing nine stone, Five furlongs, likely suited to a dirt track. So let's train him on the dirt. 
You know, and I haven't noticed if I can't seem to, even though we changed the horse down here, it only I can only change this and it, it's a mass change. I don't know why. And remember, we're not really doing anything in the way of training, so I'm not even sure how much of this we have to deal with. But I want to wait for them to get uh, in better form. And I also want to go now and buy, let's go to the jockeys, look at the apprentices. And these are our three apprentices that we can hire. So let's click on Campbell. And what you're given is a skill set. So they have their total skill, their honesty and their honesty reputation, and their obedience. My interpretation, only what it is, skill is how good they are as a jockey. Their honesty is how truthful they are when they give you feedback, which I think is very important. And their obedience is how well they listen to you. If you, if you tell them to do something, they're going to do it exactly that way. A lower obedience rep, they may take it under their own initiative to do something. So I want somebody kind of a good blend. Hamilton has the best honesty, but I think Orn kind of is the most well-rounded. So we're going to hire Orn, and he's off the board. And do I want to hire... I'm going to hire Hamilton too. So we've got two apprentice jockeys at our stable. So let's get out of here. All right. Oh, you can take a bank loan. I didn't know that. So here's this is where you actually see what your bills are. So you remember I was telling you that the numbers were going down each week. So right now we have nine staff members. That's $3,834 a week. Stable rent is $907. Taxes, feed, transportation cost, water rates, electricity. So, you know, real stuff. We haven't had any vets come out yet. Nobody's been sick. Knock on wood. All right, my racing stable. And let's see. So what we can do is we're gonna wait until this turns green, all right? So I wanna go back into our breeding stable. Look at our mares. And we need to get them all knocked up again. So let me do that off camera. All right, so we are back. We have gotten all of our mares into full. Uh, and we actually spent some pretty serious money. If we look at our top horse up here, Minus Boy was $198,900 for the stud fee. And we had a couple that, uh, about three or four that we had to breed twice, uh, mostly with some of the low ends when I think uh, Sunnyside Tom and uh, Until the Man were not men uh, the first time around. Uh, so, uh, but we've gotten them all in full. So we'll have another 32 yearlings this year. I think that's the level I'm gonna go at. We're gonna start weeding some of these out uh, as we get better fillies and uh, you know developing them into mares or as we get more money we may auction some of the lower ones out and buy in some of the better ones so we may auction out three or four buy in two or three expensive ones as we've got money but you can see we're down to 9.8 million uh, taking a look at our racing stable we haven't uh, progressed but a day but they've turned green so let's enter them into a race so how do you do that RC well, you come into your racing stable here and you click on the little white envelope and that's going to go to the racing. Now, both of our horses are here and you'll have all your horses in place. Uh, let's see. Select that horse and filter suitable races. All right. So you can see it changed. Uh, let's see. We want now she's best indicated as a seven furlong. So let's see if we can find her a seven furlong. And what you're going to want to do now, remember, I believe, again, I don't know everything about this game, but I believe you're only allowed one maiden race because that's your first race. And I think you can only race once as a two-year-old. A win sets you up for more money if you want to sell them. A loss kills their value, potentially. But, you know, we want to run these. 
Uh, so let's take a look. She's a she likes a good track. And let's go in and just look a little bit more. Um, what's our head lad? She's raring to go. All right. She's got pretty good potential. And all right, that's not telling me anything. There's something in here about the all right so let's look at let's look oh there are no seven furlong races so we may have to go with a six six year old so what you want to look at is you can see the date here so this race is going to be in saratoga springs which is 1528 miles away and if there's a fee to enter the race You'll also have your transportation cost to get to the race. The farther away it is, the more that will be. So we want to look for something maybe a little closer. So we've got Illinois, Albuquerque, and it could be that the, the Louisiana and Texas races happen later in the year. Don't know. Or earlier in the Well, we're in January, so... And it may be there aren't any races. I have no idea. Uh, 8,000 miles away in Dubai, Florida. 850, oh, here we go. Chicago is only 158 miles away. Now, on that Chicago card, there are only two maiden races for two-year-olds. One already has 12 horses entered. The other one has eight. Let's go ahead and enter her here. And available jockeys. So we can either not, well, you don't have to pick a jockey. It will assign one at random. Now, Hamilton is our jockey. That's the one we hired. <coughs> so let's have our horse uh, picked. So we picked Hamilton and we will enter the horse. Now, you could book the jockey here. Oh, confirm the book uh, and Oh, what a, wait a minute. All right, there you go. So we booked the, the jockeys in there. That means they're booked. All right. So the other one we want to do now is downhill skier. Come on. Let's pick him. And we want to do him in a one mile race. So doesn't have to be the same day. So we're looking for distance. All right, so let's maybe do the Chicago. Is that the one we just entered? Uh, yeah, we want to stay away. We don't want to run our horses against each other. 972, 724. Let's go ahead and do that one. 724 is Louisville. Uh, we've got this maiden five. Well, shoot, that's five furlongs. He likes a mile. But we didn't have a mile when we looked at the drop down. But we would probably want a little bit longer. I would like a six furlong maybe. So let's go do this six furlong right there. And we're going to pick Hamilton again. Now we can pick another one. See, there's no fee because we already pay them a salary. But they get 8% of the winnings. If we wanted another jockey... We could do that, and here's the fee to hire them, right? So just keep that in mind, and we're going to enter the horse. So we've got the horse, the race, the jockey ready to go, and we're going to get out of this. So we're going to hit back and back to – we want to go to the main screen again. Here we go. Now, at this point, you can choose what to do. You notice up here we have a new option called Skip Next. So go is going to the racetrack. Skip skips the day. So we would move from January 23rd to 24th. Skip next skips to the day before your horse is due to run. So I have 9.8 million. I really don't want to buy any more horses this year. I want to build this money up and really be able to take that next step into some more quality horses. But I'm only going to be able to do that with sales next year with another 10, 12, 13 million dollars. And that's going to give us kind of our initial start. And that's why I said back in episode one, 
don't plan on racing for two years. And we started January of 21. We're in 24. So it's been three years and we're, we're only at $9 million, but we've got our farm where we want it. We've got our first racing horses now, and we've got a stable of breeding horses that will at least generate a revenue for us. So here you have your dates, February 9th, February 13th. So let's go ahead and skip next. And we are the day before. All right. And they are both ready. So we are going to hit the skip to the next day. And here we go. So on today's date, we have Chicago. And we have the race for Swing the Lead. And is she a favorite? I don't remember what race she's in. It doesn't tell me up here. Swing the lead right here. Oh, well, it does tell us the player entry. She is not a favorite, but it will be the last race of the day. It is a maiden race. And they did have a mile, but it was the, um, well, they had, uh, it was a maiden for three-year-olds. So you could hold on to this horse. So my understanding is, at two, they're, they're able to race. You will see a drop-off typically in their potential in your, as a two-year-old, but it will rebound and get closer to their true picture in year three. And, you know, but at that point, you know, you're going to, you, you, when you sell it as a two-year-old, people are buying it more on speculation of what they might be. It's a gamble. It's a gamble, right? All right, so... We do have Swing the Lead running today. We have two horses in training, 35 breeding. Um, we're still ranked number 101. We have not run a race yet. So we are going to now, the race is today, we're going to go to the track. So now we're going to cover how to bet and how to watch the race. Okay? So this is the first race. Remember, we're running the last mat race of the day. Once you get to your race, your horse will show up with a pink name, okay? You have blue and pink, which is male and female. Uh, River Saint, I believe white means they're a gelding. I think that's what that means. I don't know that for a fact. But, uh, or maybe they're up for auction after the, after the race. Who knows? But uh, it tells you who the favorite is. So if you want to bet, Okay, and I don't know, I can't figure all of this out, but the easiest way is let's pick Sarmaka, left click one time. They show up on your betting slip, and let's bet $500 to win. And there is our first ticket. All right. So let's click on Crime Don't Pay. And what I did is I clicked Crime Don't Pay twice. That added them and then bumped them up and took Sarmaka off. Uh, Sir Hollow is on there. Let's keep $500. And, uh, oh, let's see. Maximum straight. Yeah, let's do a straight bet. So we play, oh, $3,400. No, we don't want that. <laughs> We want to stick with the $500. So a straight bet is uh, both of those guys to win. So I want to do, I don't know what that is or why I can't change it to the other option here, but oh well. All right, we're going to go with that. That gives us, so we've got three bets. Don't even remember what they were. All right, and then we are going to, you can either now go to the race and watch the race unfold skip the race and the result or skip the race but see the result so you can see if you won money or you can save and quit we're going to watch our race our horse so i'm going to skip the race but i don't want to skip the result sir hollow live your dreams and ballet go one two three uh form book this tells you how they ran if you're interested That'll be something you'll definitely want to look at um, if you are looking at, uh, you know, betting, as, you know. But here we go. So Sarmaka, we bet 500 to win. Uh, they finished out of the money. We lost 500 bucks. 
We picked the Exacta for 30. Oh, we did put the $3,400 in. So we lost that. And we also lost the $1,000. So for this race, we lost five grand. Fair, fair enough. We get out of that. We move on to the next race. I'm going to skip the race and result because I'm not going to bet. Uh, let's bet on Clay Castle here. And I'm just going to bet the favorites. So it's to win, submit, and that's Clay Castle. Clay Castle finished second. All right. So we ended up losing uh, 500 bucks on that. That's too bad. Uh, anybody, we have joint favorites, so we're going to leave that alone. So we're going to skip the race and result. Two joint favorites there. We'll skip joint favorites there. Uh, we have one favorite here, seven to two. You know what? We're going to go heavy. We're going to bet a thousand, a thousand dollars to win. Skip the race. Fair fall. So we bet a thousand. They were off at seven to two, and we won thirty-five hundred dollars. So we made up some money. We lost nineteen hundred dollars on the day. Now we are, of course, going to bet our horse once we get there. Uh, we're going to skip this race and result. And what you could do is say, okay, this race, I would probably bet best one. So let's skip the race, but not the result. Oh, uh, best one finished second. So now I know I would have lost money there. Uh, and Glacial Storm, if we would bet that one, finished second. So, you know. All right, here we go. Swing the lead is going off at a long shot, 40 to 1. Current odds are 50 to 1. I'm going to bet 500 bucks, but not to win. See, now I'm able to choose EW. I don't know what that does. We're going to place that bet. But then I'm going to come back to there and we're going to bet Glen Cairn Star to win. All right, now you want to watch the race. You click go to race. And remember, if you've got the sound on, you'll have some music or and talking here. The, the developer does some audio or there's a computer monotone. It's kind of horrible, uh, to be honest with you. Um, but I guess with all the names, it has to be that way. Swing the leads coming out of the ninth gate. Raging Cajun is the trainer, Rosario. Why is our jockey not riding that horse? I don't know. Down at the bottom, you see it says hit the space bar. It gives you a run around the track so you can see it. And up in the upper left-hand corner, you have the current standings. So swing the lead is currently in sixth position and is number, number nine. So it looks like up against the rail here. You can speed it up. Fast forward by hitting the tab button, quit by hitting the escape, and skip the race by hitting the space bar. Uh, swing the lead is currently in six. One, two, three, four, five. There's swing the lead. There's our horse right here. Oh, he's giving it a little bit of a, a whip. Cuts to the inside, trying to shave some time off, but he is just not making up any ground, it doesn't look like. Or she, uh, she is not. So let's go ahead and speed the race up. She's fading. She's next to last. And that's where she's going to finish. Photo finish there. Swing the lead. Coming in next to last. We didn't finish last, so that's good. And then a replay of the finish in, in time. So not till Monday, 9 to 2. The joint favorites, Wildwood Flower, Glen Cairn Star, finished second and third, respectively. So the winner came out of the eighth gate. I'm sorry, this runner-up came out of the eighth gate. And uh, yeah, swing the lead. We bet to show, which is winning is first, place is second, show is third. Now, if they finish first or second, you still win money, just not as much. So show is actually a good bet if you're not sure what you're doing, uh, which I don't. Um, I typically bet favorites or whatever horse I think looks the best or one that catches my fancy. I have been to the horse track 
three times, and I've actually won money twice. Um, not a ton. I mean, you know, I, I bet the minimum three dollars a race, and I've walked out with you know twenty or thirty bucks uh, all told. One time I won two hundred dollars. That was the most I ever won. So we're down twenty nine hundred on the day. Our horse did not give us a good run, and our jockey says that she was ridden as a closer. Sorry, but we were never in it. So she just may not have it. Now it could have something to do. Well, there's another race here. We are going to skip today's racing. Uh, this is the maiden here, five furlongs. There we go. Uh, so if we go in here now, we can go to our stable. Now there is a way, a little jaded past performances. Oh, here we go. So you can come here and go into past performances. Uh, you can view, see the race replay. You can view the form card, uh, which was basically what we saw. Settled early, mid-division, halfway, soon weakened. So she was mid-pack halfway through the race, but faded late. So this was on a six furlong, right? So even though it says that she is preferential to, where is the number I'm looking for? Preferential. You remember there was one that gave us the, oh, I know what it was. If we go to, if we go here to enter it, says that she prefers seven furlongs. Well, we ran a six and she faded. So seven, she's either not in shape or she's not seven furlongs. So maybe next time we want to do a five furlong and see if she's better there. So let's look and see where we just raced February 9th. We can only go out a month, maybe, maybe two months. And I don't know if we can even enter another race here. So let's see. If we look at 792 appears to be the closest. That's a, a, but see, that's a maiden race. So if we go there, we want to enter the horse. And then we want to pick the jockey and book the jockey. Oh, so you do, you have to pick it and book it. That's why Hamilton didn't ride it. Hamilton's not going to be the best rider, but remember, they give honest feedback. So what I'm looking for in that first or second race is a real honest opinion. And I don't know who this other guy was. So we've got Hamilton confirmed. And we're going to go to one more race today. So we're going to skip to the day before our next race. And that is going to be February 13th tomorrow. That's going to be our Colt. So let's go ahead and skip to that day and go to the track. All right, so let's go ahead and bet just a little bit. Uh, so 500 EW, we're going to do that. Vision of Dreams, didn't, didn't make in the money. Uh, I'm going to bet on, actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to bet on Gold Away. Let's bet 500 on him to show. And what was his name? Gold Away. Finished third, so we won some money. Uh, we actually broke even. What is this? Type of bet. It was to show, win, play, show. Hmm. Multiple bets. See, it's saying I lost, but if I bet 500, I should have got my money back, I think. All right, here's Downhill Skier. He's going off at 40 to 1 as an underdog. Uh, I'm going to bet 100 to win. I am going to bet a hundred to show 
and I am going to bet Manjum five hundred to win. Just hedging bets, guys. So we're going to go to the race. It's raining, so that's not good. We're coming out of the three gate. 40 to 1 odds. All right, so the third gate is from the rail, so we are right. Oh, we're right here. Third from the outside, I guess. All right, we are off uh, in second position. Uh, looks like we're in the lead, but I guess not. Oh, yep, we're now in the lead. So that's good. Go downhill skier. All right, he's falling back to second by a nose, by a head. He's just ahead in front of the number one horse, Man Jam. That's, uh, that's just wrong on so many levels. Man Jam. Keep this channel clean. I'm going to get demonetized if I made money. All right, we're drifting back into the pack here. We're still running third. And we are opening up a little bit of a gap between the fourth and fifth, but we're fading from the top two. We've got money on Man Jam. I think that's what that uh, that little coin it says. Come on. Come on, downhill skier. Oh, he's fading off the map. Uh, up here, it tells us how far we have left. We've got four furlongs, which is a half mile. They're running at 34 miles an hour. And there's the finish. And we finish in third. So we're in the money in our first race. So we have won some cash. Good deal. All right, there's the finish. Man Jam finishes second at five to two. We should win some money. Uh, we bet on him to win. And we finished third at 40 to one. We should get a little bit of a payout. Uh, we bet 100 and we win 900. We bet 100 to win and we lose that because he finished second below what we asked for. So we made 100 bucks today. So we're going to, and, you know, we won whatever we won for the race itself so downhill skier the jockey says ridden as a stalker now stalker means they're they don't want to be out front but they don't want to be in the rear either they want to be just off the leaders so whoever sets the lead pace they're going to try to keep pace with them but right behind them uh he said and he said they're prop we're probably suited as a stalker and the trip appeared to suit well so <clears throat> he he made up a little ground. He had some distance, so that may be a good distance for him. Uh, although it says he now, but maybe he has more stamina. We can maybe look at a little bit longer race. All right. Well, I'm going to skip the rest of these races. All right, and he is back, uh, and he's ready to race. So now, if we were playing with the regular training. He'd be red because he just ran today. He'd be really exhausted. We'd have to re rebuild him, recuperate, get him back into training. But the easy training takes care of all that. It's doing all the training. We just put the stuff out at the, at the farm to train with, and he will get better as good as he can be. So uh, let's see. He's excitable. We finished, this was, oh, this was a maiden, so it, it was a C4, so it wasn't a group race, so we don't get that. His breeding indicator is one mile and a group two, so it's actually speculating he could be a group two runner. So that's not bad, that's not bad for him. If we look at swing the lead, uh, a group one runner, which is the top group at seven furlongs, and laid back, which is evidently a good, uh, a good um, trait to have for a horse. Uh, let's see if we look at our summary. So we're still ranked number one hundred and one, but we've won one thousand two hundred and thirty-nine dollars. That's how much we won for finishing third. So that's his career earnings. So that is excellent. We have two horses in training still. So that's basically the game in a nutshell, guys. And then at this point, you would go ahead and 
uh, auction out more horses, buy more horses at auction, breed more horses, you know, build up your breeding stable, uh, get rid of some of your less productive mares in your breeding stable as you elevate the level of quality there. But remember, just because you have a really good brood mare and you breed her with the best stallion doesn't mean you're going to get a winning horse. Anyway, I think that gives you all you need to know to really play this game. Uh, so again, we've covered out how to set the game up, how to go to auction, how to buy, how, how to sell. Uh, we've done the easy training and uh, that's the way I would suggest you go until you get a firm handle on the game. Uh, we have uh, sh looked at how to bet races. We have looked at how to get into the races, but how to skip the race, but see the results, how to skip the race and the results if you just don't care, uh, how to speed the race up, how to skip the race once you're in it, up to you. All of that's been covered. I hope these videos have helped. And... Um, Hey, if they have, consider giving them all a thumbs up to let more people find them because, you know, that's how YouTube does it is based on the number of likes. And, uh, you know, if you'd like to see maybe a career of this, let me know down in the comments and I will take it under advisement. It's certainly going to be a game I'm going to put into my uh, role, you know, my, my rotating games that I play on the side when I don't have uh, videos that I'm recording for my channel. It won't be the primary video because that's football manager for me, but I do enjoy playing other stuff. Right now, I think we're updating uh, Mist Survival, and, uh, and then I wanted to do this. I'm also doing a college basketball journeyman save uh, as a guest blogger uh, for GM Games. You can check out their YouTube channel. All my college basketball videos are over there, uh, but hey. Thanks so much for hanging out. I hope these videos were helpful for you guys. And uh, we may see you back out at the starting gate for starters orders. Take care. Bye.